You love the Lord, give him a shout of praise. Anyone madly in love with Jesus, give him a louder shout of victory. Hey! Hey! You are welcome in Jesus' precious name. I bring you greetings from the garden city of Port Harcourt where we had a most unusual healing and deliverance crusade. The Port Harcourt program was meant to be a return match because last year when we went there for crusade, the rain did not allow the third day to happen well. It happened, miracles, signs and wonders happened, but we promised that We'll return back there. The first night, rain tried to fall at the beginning, but the rain was arrested before we arrived. And the crusade was explosive with multitudes on the first day. Second day, explosion. Third day, explosive fire. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. The governor of the state was out of state, but sent his deputy governor with four commissioners, chief of staff, on the first night. And most of them remained with the crusade throughout. We prayed for the state and we trust God that something powerful happened. Nigeria is being filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Whether the devil likes it or not, he is never in control in our nation. Jesus is in control. Quickly, John chapter 15 and in verse 16, I'd like you to pay every dime of, the, of attention you have tonight, today. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. So that whatsoever you ask, you shall ask of the Father in my name. He may give it unto you. This morning, I'm looking at, we are looking at channels of evangelism channels of evangelism, channels of soul winning. Our objective this morning is to understand soul winning channels, kinds or types and then to understand the ultimate of soul winning. The ultimate of evangelism. There are many things we have established in the course of the month and first and very important is that soul winning is every believer's call. It's every believer's call. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's every believer's call. Mark chapter 16 from verse 15, 16 all the way. It is every believer's call to be a soul winner is to be a kingdom asset. And to be a bench warmer is to be a kingdom liability. There are soul winners in church and there are bench warmers. They just warm the bench. They just come to church. They occupy space. Nobody in the kingdom can be traced to their impact. Yesterday in Port Harcourt, Young lady, medical doctor, consultant, pediatrician. A 
a junior in the university, met me and met my wife. She said the turning point of her Christian life happened in the university. She said it happened when she encountered me. She told me a story that I cannot remember. She said I was in the cafeteria eating and, she, and I had finished and I was going and she had come and when I, I went I passed her and returned back. And I said to her, I was praying for you the other day and the Lord showed me that there is a friend in your life that is not good for you. And the Lord said, you should adjust your ways because he's interested in your life. She said at that time, number one, how God knew. Number two, that God cared for her to speak to somebody about her life. She's seen me 20 something years later. She still had. She's having goosebumps as she was saying it yesterday. She's repeated to me, repeated to my wife. She said at that time, there were friends in her life that were not godly. Number two, she will come to church on Sunday and go to show on the weekend. Mr. University, Miss University, this and that. She was in all of them. When that word came, it was 360 degrees turn around. Packed that thing so out of the friend's place, disconnected completely from all of them. They say, we don't see you again. Say, I'm a medical student. We are supposed to be reading very seriously. Changed her life forever. And she said God did a miracle. When she disconnected absolutely from those friends. God saved the friends later. And returned them back to her as friends. Now born again and saved. She is talking about the impact of his somebody. That impacted her life in the university. Almost 30 years ago. And I'm just, I'm just wondering. I said I'm appreciative to God for this privilege. She said I am more appreciative. She saw my daughter. She said I follow you on Instagram. You, you people are doing very well. Following the Lord passionately. And she said, she said to her I thank God for the kind of father and parent God has given me. And the woman said I am aware. I have first hand knowledge of the kind of parent that God gave you. Kind of, I have the first hand knowledge of who they are. She herself has children 20 something years. Am I communicating? There are people you can't trace anybody to their impact. At that time, I wasn't a pastor. I wasn't planning to be a pastor. Being a full-time pastor was the last thing on my schedule because I didn't want anybody to say, oh, this is one of those who is also looking for money. Because they considered pastors as people who don't have anything to do, so they are looking for money. I respected myself so much, I didn't want anybody to look down on me. I wanted to rather make money and put it in the gospel. Hallelujah. It is every believer's responsibility. There must be somebody traceable that can be traced, not one, not two, not three, traceable to your life's impact. So that's the first thing. Soul winning is every believer's responsibility. Number two, it takes wisdom. That is divine strategy to win souls. The Bible said, in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. He said. The fruit of the righteous. Is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls. Is wise. He that winneth souls. Is wise. It takes wisdom. It takes strategy. To win souls. To touch lives. Wisdom strategy. He that winneth souls. Is wise. 
And thirdly, it takes both the help and leading of the Holy Spirit to win souls. Help and leading. If you remember the story of the centurion, how he was led to the eunuch. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. And as they went on their way, they came to his, onto a certain water. All right. Look before them. The Spirit of the Lord. Yes, that's right, 29. This 8, 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Join this chariot. So many times, we'll look, we'll need wisdom. We'll need the leading different modalities to lead people to Christ. Now, having said all of this, what are the channels of soul winning? One, preaching. Matthew 28, 18 to 19. said, Jesus came, on, unto them, came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach or preach all nations, preach to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Always. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16, 15 to 17. He said, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Preach the gospel to every creature. Preaching. Preaching is basically revealing the love and the mercy of God to mankind. We are going to go into practical teachings on evangelism probably by Wednesday or Sunday and I don't want you to miss that at all. Preaching in evangelism is not condemnation. It's not accusation. It's not if you don't repent, just know you are going straight to hell. There are many people who will... You know, when I was in the high institution, before I rededicated my life to Christ, one young man came to... I don't know whether it was preaching he was trying to do at that time. It was more like an insult. Not all of you doing your father's work. The devil, the devil. Talking like that. That man is still alive today. And he's an ardent follower of this ministry. But what he was trying to tell me at that time offended me. I had an encounter overnight with Jesus, 12th of May, 1986. If it was left for that man, I wouldn't go to church. There are many of us whose approach is so brutal that nobody wants to follow you to church. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. amen. You know, I saw something in the Bible. This is Galatians chapter 3. And in verse 8, 
He said, and the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. So the Lord God preached the gospel to Abraham before. And what was that gospel? Good news. Indeed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. So we come to people most of the times with good news. When I go to some neighborhoods and I just arrive and I say, the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. It is well with your soul in the name of Jesus. You will not die before your time. The agenda of the enemy will never prosper in your life. Your family will not know shortage. What killed your mother can't kill you. I came here to release the love of God to you. And I came here to let you know that God is merciful. And that God wants to change your life. And I want to let you know it's a new season. Jesus sent me here to release his blessings upon you. But you know what? It is not free. It is conditional. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things I just talked about shall be added unto you. If you follow your own path, you go to hell. Follow Jesus. And you will enjoy life in this world and in the, in the world to come. He said, that's right. So I want you to pray with you. And I want you for this decrees to rest upon you. And for you to escape torment on earth and in hell. And make heaven. I want you to pray this prayer of surrender of your life. Go ahead and say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Isn't that very easy? I don't waste time to say, so would you want to give your life to Christ? The devil will tell them, say no. It's like telling a dead man to make a choice. The Bible said they are dead in sin. It's like telling a madman to make a decision. Because most people in sin are beside themselves. When I arrive, I, I decree blessing straight. And by privilege of God, they just rush at it. It is well with your soul in Jesus' name. Is it not supposed to be well with them? Does God want them to die before their time? May God help you achieve every expectation of your heart. Amen. Every sickness that wants to kill you in your body now, the Lord return it back to hell. Amen. But you know what? God has only the license to walk on those who belong to him. For as long as he doesn't own you, his right over your life is limited. You want all the things that God wants to do in your life to happen? Let him own you. Hand over yourself to him. Disconnect from the life of sin. Disconnect from disobeying him. Make your ways right with him. That was why Jesus came to die for you. To set you free. It's a free, it's a very, very great experience to know Jesus. Peace is yours. Wow, really? What do I do? Pray this prayer with me. Powerful. How is that compared to? I want to let you know the way you are smoking now. Hell is where you are going. Hell straight. In fact, you should be lucky that you have not died. You should be lucky that you have not died. Yeah. How can you be smoking? Are you kitchen? Are you kitchen? <laughs> I'm telling you now, I used to do it in those days. Oh yes, very raw in those days. In the, in the university days. <laughs> but it didn't produce much result though. <laughs> you, you, only, you only appear uh, terrible to many people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the first is preaching. And this preaching is the most basic. Any of the other things I am going to say are the things 
that you do additionally to ensure that the preaching is impactful. So number one is preaching. Number two is testimonies. Channel of evangelism. Testimonies. Psalm 105 and in verse 1 to 2. Psalm 105 verse 1 to 2. All give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Let people know what God is doing. It's a channel of evangelism. That was what the woman of Samaria did, the Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4, verse 29 to verse 30, the Samaritan woman, she said, come and see a man who told me all the things that, I, that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city, a whole city emptied because a woman told the story. I have always said that you may not know how to preach, but almost everybody knows how to tell a story. Almost everybody knows how to relate an experience. There are times I relate the experience of my life to people. I was a young man, even though I was brought up in the way of the Lord, yet I was trying to miss road, and then I was on a, a fast lane of missing road, and then suddenly I became afraid of death, and then suddenly one night, I, you know, I just related my experience of how I came to the Lord. You can tell your story. You can also tell the story of something you saw in church. You heard. Said I was in service today and a young man testified of how he died. Said I've never had a thing like this all my life. How this man died. And stepped out of his body. And then he said he saw the vision of his pastor in that other world. Who said I came from a preaching engagement in Bielsa to rescue you back. You can tell a story. Somebody told us a story. How that? When she was watching that video and the man testified. How many of you remember? Last month, right? And I was crying profusely. And she was crying profusely. Yes, she was watching in America. Then she fell into a trance. And I'll say it because one of these days we'll hear of it. She fell into a trance. Where she saw that I was invited to preach somewhere. And at the last minute, I could not come for the program outside this country. And I called the people and said, I'm sorry, I cannot come because of so and so. Maybe flight related or something. So the people relaxed. Suddenly, the second day of the program, I showed up wearing a red suit according to her. And the man ushered me into the service, preached, ministered, all manner of things happened. And then we went into the uh, pastor's office or something um, so that um, uh, he can go ahead and arrange for the hotel reservation. And suddenly, he didn't see me anymore. So he thought that maybe they were so slow, I got offended, and then I, I went and arranged the hotel myself. So he called my wife and said, I'm so sorry. Um, we, we were so sorry, we didn't plan well, we didn't plan on time. He just finished ministering with us, and he has gone to organize a hotel for himself. Please apologize to him. He said, who? He said, we are here together. She said, God told her, what you just heard that man say is shadow. You have seen nothing yet. So I told her, I said, I am not surprised because I've seen such revelations. And there are things you cannot say. Let's wait until they happen. <laughs> there are things you cannot say. So you can, you can tell a story.
testimony evangelism. These stories may be imprinted from whom I talk about that later. But you can, the easiest thing to do is to tell someone the story of your experience, the story of your own life. Demos Shekarian of the full gospel business then fellowship when he founded that fellowship the whole basis of that ministry was testimonies. People just shared the story of their life. How they met with the master. How their lives changed. And then they leave the people to make their decision. So testimonies is a channel of evangelism. Testimonies. The first is preaching. The second is testimonies. And then we shall rush quickly. Number three, character. Your character is a message. Your character is a preaching. In Acts chapter 11 verse 26. And when they had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. They observed them, observed their character and, and felt these people look like Christ. They were called Christians first in Antioch. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. He said, likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word. They also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. That word conversation is manner of life. Can I have the living Bible translation or the new living translation of that passage? First Peter chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Wives, fitting with your husband's plans for then if they refuse to listen when you talk to them about the Lord, they will be won by your respectful pure behavior. Your godly lives will speak to them better than any words. Your godly lives will speak to them better than any words. Verse 2. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2 of the same passage. Your godly lives will speak to them better than any words. Verse 2, 1 Peter chapter 3, 1, verse 2, the Living Bible version. They may be won over without words. By the behavior. Now, wives, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives. This is not just to only wives. This is to employees. This is to employers. This is to friends. This is to children. This is to parents. That your action is more evangelistic than your confession. Your action is more evangelistic than your utterance. I heard the man, St. Augustine, said of the Catholic Church, he said, preach the gospel always and when necessary, use words. That is, Preach the gospel all the time. When necessary, use words. What's the meaning of that statement? 
that your major preaching is not your word. Your major preaching is your life. Your major preaching is your character. Preach the gospel always. When necessary, use words. That is character evangelism. There are some people who will not listen to you because what you are saying is contrary to what they see of your life. Follow me to church to go and do what? To go and steal like you are stealing at work? Follow you to church to go and do what? To go and lie like you are lying? Come and serve my God to do what? You know, there are some people they say that ah, if this one is going to heaven, then everybody will go to heaven. No. Your, 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 your action and your words should match. Somebody say it loud, amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say the loud most, amen. I hope you are coping with the level of light. You are trying. I'm sure it's been sorted. Number four is kindness. Kindness Love Preaches John 3.16 For God so loved the world That he gave his only begotten son That whosoever believes in him Should not perish But have everlasting life Evangelism can never happen Without loving the people. Songs of Solomon 8, 6 said, Love is as strong as death. Love can handle the power of death. And the wages of sin is death. So love can deliver from death. It can deliver from sin. You love the person to a point where he decided to follow what you said. Somebody say a loud amen. John, Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 16. He said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine that they see your good so the emphasis here is that the second part the good works. What is good works. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. You see the good works and arms did. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dockers. This woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which she did. These are good works. Works of charity. Works that things that impact and touch people's lives. He said when you, you touch people's lives, you impact them they will be attracted to whatever you have to offer or say to them. Am I communicating? This is where the home church comes in massively here. You look in your neighborhood, a stranded family, a needy people, hungry people. You reach out to them. Call it welfare evangelism. Call it charity evangelism. You try to reach them, to touch them practically. You are not even preaching to them yet. By the time you have touched them practically and you say this is the love of Jesus we are communicating to you. They want to know that Jesus. One day a young student going to the university passed through me a relation and then I gave him very very massive amount of money and I think I've done that once 
and done that a second time without telling him to, to, to come to church. And I'm a pastor and he knows. Without telling him to be saved, be born again. I'm just helping him. At the end of the day, will you want to give yourself completely to Jesus Christ? Since you are a pastor, you didn't force me to follow you to church. You gave me money free of charge and you let me go. And I returned back, you gave me money again. You're almost taking care of my schooling. And you're asking me to follow you to the God who gave you the money. And I say no. That guy followed Jesus on the spot. Till today, till tomorrow, he's with him tight like this. God bless him himself. He's now helping other people. He has his millions now. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Very, very important. You can't teach them until you touch them. People, many of us want to teach people that we have not touched. If you want to successfully touch them, you must successfully teach them. This is very, very important. Love them until they are ready to hear what you have to offer. Love them until they cannot say no to your Jesus. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. Amen. Number five is excellence. Like I said, the most basic is the preaching, but all this will back it up. Excellence. That is outstanding existence. Outstanding resolve. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men. Shine. Be a shining star before men in your world. Don't be a mediocre staff in your office. Don't be a mediocre medical doctor. Don't be a mediocre lawyer. Don't be a mediocre scientist. Whatever is your realm, be outstanding. Your excellence is more evangelistic than your utterance. That's another one. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Very, very important. Excellence brings audience. Excellence brings audience. Excellence brings influence. When I, I mean excellence, I mean excel. Be, at, be, be on top of your game. Don't be a mediocre in your realm. Be an authority in your field. Whatever you do, do it well. Be at the top. And then you will influence the system from up down. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. David was so outstanding in Israel. So outstanding. He was the number one instrumentalist. He was the number one singer. He was the number one warrior. He was the number one everything. When he was on the run from Saul, look at what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 2. 1 Samuel 22 and in verse 2, the Bible said, and everyone that was in debt, in distress, everyone that was in debt, everyone that was discontented, he didn't look for them. They gathered themselves unto him. They gathered, they rallied around him and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men that came to him free of charge. Am I communicating at all? When you attract, when you are a star, you attract fans. 
Am I communicating? You attract fans, and these fans can be turned into disciples. You are just naturally, naturally, they are they are your fanatic, and you let them know. Look, there is somebody bigger than me. I, I am also the fan of somebody else. His name is Jesus. You see, that is why we are you are duty bound to succeed. And you shall succeed. That is also very, the reason why you must have plenty money. The Bible says money answers all things. You, have, you must have plenty money. You know when you go to the village. <laughs> and you, came, and you co came with financial power. Whatever you say goes. You know means gives voice. If you have the means you have the voice. I'm telling you the truth. When you are influential in Hausa language, they say that even the man's gas, that man who is highly influential, he gasped. He said, It is our perfume. <laughs> that his Tusa is the Aturari. That is the extent to which they are ready to cope with him. <laughs> That's the extent to which they will cope with him. No, 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 forget about it. You don't have any problem with everything about you we accept. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is God speaking to us? But, uh, but if you are wretched and poor and you are a pauper, the hatred multiplies. You didn't do anything, they just hate you for nothing. What is your offense? Failure. Failure. Why are they hating me? Scarcity. <laughs> That's why the Bible said the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Whatever you do, please don't fail. Whatever you do, don't be a tail, be the head. Am I communicating at all? Whatever you do, if you want your voice to be heard in your generation, if you want your influence to be felt in your generation, whatever you do, don't fail, don't fail. Even if you will not succeed for the sake of yourself, succeed for the sake of those who need to come to God because of your success. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Even if you will not succeed because of yourself, succeed because of those who will come to God because of your success. Even if you will not have resources because of yourself, have resources because of those who will come to God because you have resources. I stand here today by the prophetic and apostolic mandate of God on my life. You will never fail another time. You will never be called a tail in your life. You will never be called a tail in your life. You will never be called a mediocre in your life. The grace to be the head and not the tail. That grace is released upon you now. The grace to be outstandingly successful. That grace is released upon you now. If you are saying amen, shout the loud most amen. Wow. This is exciting. Somebody here who believes that before this month is over, before the first quarter of, of of this year is over God will make you a success story a story of excellence a story of distinction a story of quality a story of notorious authority for the sake of the gospel for the sake of the kingdom shout the loudest amen I don't preach materialism I don't preach materialism, but I preach kingdom prosperity for purpose. 
I preach, I preach, I preach supernatural resources for kingdom assignment. For the purpose of the kingdom. Not just for the sake of belonging to a group of people. Or for the sake of I made it. Me too, I have made it. Me too, I can drive this kind of car. But for the sake of depopulating hell. And populating heaven. For the sake of punishing the devil. His people. And intimidating ungodly successful people. Who think that they can be independent of God. And succeed. You stand side by side with them and you say what you have I have more what you can do I can do more wherever you can go I can go further but I have plenty things you don't have I have peace of mind you don't have I have the anointing you don't have if a witch face me now I kill it if a witch face you now I finish you to never say I will succeed whether the devil likes it or not I will succeed for the sake of the kingdom I will impact my generation for the sake of the kingdom shout the loudest amen give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat That was how Daniel was and influenced the whole of Babylon. That was how Queen Esther was. That was how Joseph was. He was outstanding until he influenced and impacted the whole of Egypt. Excellent. Number six. Wow, I have so much more to go. Three more to go. Number six is print. Evangelism can happen at the frequency of the print. Print media. Psalm 68 verse 11. He said, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company that published it. The Lord gave the word. Publishers of the word fall into the company of greatness. Mark chapter 1 verse 45. A leper was healed. And the Bible says, but he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. One man went out and published Something that happened to him in the test in the ministry of Jesus, and that publication brought people to the master from every quarter. From every quarter, you don't need to go and print it afresh, it is already printed for you. We have the print in form of evangelism tracks, testimony tracks, and stories. When it is not convenient. Or when the time is to, they are showing you several of them, when the time is too choked for you to talk, or it's not where you can easily, you just pass it out. And a whole community can be dragged. Somebody said the testimony of how they gave someone a tract on the road. So what is this? He threw it down. And that person said, what is this man throwing down? He picked it up. That was what brought the person to church. Gave the person a turnaround. Print media. It's one of the cheapest. In those days, in the late 70s, early 80s, mid 80s, as children of God, we didn't consider ourselves fully dressed until tracks are in your pocket. Because you, 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 are, you are almost like a, a, a doctor on call 24 hours. You can give that tract in a taxi. You can give in the market. You can give anywhere. 
It's a channel. Number six. Number seven is power. This is called power evangelism. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in, Jer and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is power. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the world with signs following. Somebody say amen. Confirming the world with signs following. Amen. This is where you apply the hand on the afflicted leg. Suddenly, the leg is healed. And everybody knew that Jesus was the healer. This is when you step into a place and they say, oh, the father of the house is lying in the, in, 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 in the, in the bedroom. And they say, really, can we pray in agreement? And you lay your hands on that father. And that father got healed on the spot. And then you draw the curtain and give an altar call. This is power. This is the kind of evangelism that takes us to the crusade field. That was the kind of evangelism that Bonke did. And then several of the elders, power evangelism. Help that man. The ushers were too slow. Supposing he was a more dangerous person. You allow him to run that length. Something landed on him. Hey! Hey! And this church is power actually. Do and it's power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Don't struggle to heal any person. It is God who heals. Accept responsibility and leave the results. In the hands of God. If you lay hands on a person. And the person got healed. You are not the one who healed him. Who healed him? If the person didn't get healed. You are not the one who refused to heal him. All you have done. Is to discharge your responsibility. And leave results. In the hands of God. Once in a while, you take a bottle of oil and do a hospital visitation. Over the weekend, find out when is the visitation time, visiting time. Step in there. So I came to bless you and pray with you. I am from Dunamis International Gospel Center. Jesus has sent me through the instruction of my pastor, Dr. Pastor Paul Enoche, to come here and pray with you. And I am here, not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. And with the mantle of that commission to cast out every pain, and every demon, and every disease. And, you, and all of a sudden, the pain is healed. The growth is gone. The fractured bone is mended. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you gave them an invitation to church. And they will come. And when you invite people, when you invite them to church like that, ask them to come with the whole of their families. Because that is what happens in the scripture. Am I communicating? This is power evangelism. Don't be afraid to pray for the afflicted. There are times the devil may tell you, but you also you have your own problem. Tell the devil I know what I am doing. It was when Job prayed for his friends that God turned his captivity. 
Job chapter 42 verse 10. So there are times that re releasing healing to somebody re re causes you to receive healing for yourself. Am I communicating? Jan Crouch, the wife of Paul Crouch, both of them are blessed memory. TBM founders. She was having a mental condition for years, like 20 years or so. Um, and then she said one day she saw a girl who was shabbily dressed, obviously mental condition. And she was overwhelmed with compassion because she knew what it felt for somebody to be in such a situation. She went to that girl, embraced her, laid hands on her, and began to cry on top of her head. Cried upon the girl, cried. And, 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 and suddenly, this girl got healed of mental condition. And the same time, she got healed of the same condition on the spot. I heard a man who is, who was, who is a healing evangelist. He said he had arrhythmias, irregular heartbeat for almost 20 years. And then in the service one day, he saw somebody with such a heart condition. And then laid hands on the person. And while he lay hands, when the person fell under power, he too fell. Both of them fell together. Both of them rose up healed of the same thing. Am I communicating? Healed of the same thing. So this is power evangelism. The power is not for show. It is for help. Take your seat. We are, you, are, you are trying your best to ensure that somebody is relieved of affliction, is relieved of pain, is relieved of frustration. I prophesy upon somebody here, a new wave of power is coming upon you. A new wave of power is coming upon you. A new wave of signs and wonders is coming upon you. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat. Let me say two things. When the Bible says, this sign shall follow. He didn't say this sign shall follow pastors or apostles or prophets or teachers or those who have founded a ministry. This sign shall follow who? Then everybody who believe is a commander of signs. Let me give you another question. The fact that you prayed and a blind eye opened does not signify a call into full-time ministry. Because many people have jammed rock. So, I just pray somebody's deaf ear open. If you are in this church, deaf ear open, it shouldn't be a, a hard issue. Oh, I pray somebody's deaf ear open. The other day, I also prayed the woman said the, the, the tumor, oh, the hyena has disappeared. I think that I have a call into full time ministry. In fact, the next day, the produce letter heading. Complementary card. The most fireful ministry international. They come to church, they come to which church? I have prayed and deaf can hear. Next thing is that what God did not ask and set his life back for 20 years. Your normal life in signs and wonders. You are a businessman. You are a politician. You are, you are a, a professor. Your normal realm of life. You should even be able to give a word of knowledge in your professor's, professoral class. Um, is there anything like a, an affliction or something? Is there a pain on the left leg or something? You're right. Stand up. <laughs> uh, we are just doing rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's why she I'm came. From Jam. She's from, from Germany Jam. with pain on the left leg. And I'm just giving an example. Put up the woman. Lift your hands. That's to show you that why you came is already handled. Lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus, I declare power of the Holy Ghost. Done. That's your normal realm. Your normal. Yeah. Well. Give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a big clap, a big shout. Stand on your feet, people. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph.
Take your seat. When that doctor we met yesterday told us the story, maybe I would be, have been 300 level in the university. No, no plan to be a pastor. I was praying for you the other day and the Lord showed me. That's normal realm. Praise the Lord. One more time, I prophesy to you, you are stepping into a dimension of power like you have never seen before. You are stepping into a dimension of manifestation like you have never seen before. Power evangelism. Power evangelism is your portion in Jesus' precious name. Finally, number eight. What have we looked at so far? The diverse ways of channels is preaching two testimonies three character four kindness and love five excellence being at the top of your game six print seven power eight presence or divine presence this is divine presence evangelism All of the things I have mentioned, they don't stop you from speaking. They are all additional. What am I talking about? This is a situation where people come near you and feel God. And the God they feel releases upon them a terror of God. Releases upon them a conviction about God. Genesis chapter 35 and in verse 5. The Bible said, and they journeyed. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. The terror of the Lord. So, where the presence of God is upon you, releases a terror upon those around you. They feel God. He releases upon them a terror. Releases upon them a conviction. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. The Bible said Jesus was in the house. And it was noise that he was in the house. And then the multitude gathered. Whenever you carry God, you attract the gathering of multitudes. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23. This is very, very graphic. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Even they shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you. For we have heard, we have felt, we can see that God is with you. Somebody say amen. Somebody observes you for a while and he says, I feel God when I come near you. Can you show me the way? You know, in our world today, what people feel most times when they come around us is the flesh. Some feel seduction. Some feel arrogance. Some feel pride. Some feel all manner. But God is looking for people that people can come around and feel him. That was the secret of Charles Giffney. Everywhere he stepped, people looked at him and they began to weep for their sins. Because he carried the presence of God that convicted people of sin. Smith Wigglesworth sat in the, in the coach of the train one day and two people sat in front of him and he said, who are you? You just convict us of sin. That is looking at you, we are convinced that we are sinners. He hasn't said a thing. It's called presence evangelism. You carry a presence. It makes the job easy for you. My wife seated here is my witness. Countless places, well, when I say countless, it can be counted, but I don't know the count. All around the world, inside the plane from Germany, inside the plane from yeah, you know, the airport in Abuja, the airport in Lagos, the airport, 
See, there is something about you. There is something about you. There is something about you. Can you? And then I say, yes, it's Jesus, come, let's pray. Yesterday morning, how many police and military and civil defense and all of them gathered us oh, 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 round? Before you knew it, she was saying, who was telling the others to join? Before you knew it, a crowd gathered. So I laid hands on all of them. And she said, don't forget to lead them to Christ. Said, all right, pray this prayer with me. You, so, you see this? Presence evangelism. It will even paralyze the powers of evil around you. When, they, when people with evil intention come around and feel God, they just get paralyzed. The terror of God was upon them and they could not pursue. Beyond that, that presence of God is a convicting presence that makes sinners to want to follow you to your God. You, don't, you didn't preach to, you didn't even need to preach. Your presence alone, your car, there is an aura around you, there is an aroma, there is a persona, there is a fragrance. You carry something. Dear sister, dear brother, that, to, that is what to carry. Don't point people to your flesh. Point people to your God. Don't point people to your flesh. Point them to your God. Don't point people to your body. Point them to your spirit. The focus of today's dressing is how much of the body can be advertised. That would distract your spiritual impact, may destroy some people, and may cause you to join them where you send them to. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? The focus of our generation is flesh, is carnality, is everything. If they are advertising a cream, it's a woman that is naked or almost naked. If they are advertising Fanta, it may be a woman. If they are advertising evil refrigerator, man's shoe, pen, tie. Do you understand? It must have to do with some, and then everybody is joining the parade of making people see flesh instead of spirit. The, the, the most important part of you is not your flesh. That one will rot in the earth. You wouldn't like the way you look 48 hours after you breathe your last. Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> you wouldn't like the way you look 48 hours after you have breathed your last. The one that remains and remains is the con content of the container, the spirit. That is what to emphasize. That is what to invest in. That's what to invest in. That is what to advertise. That is what to, to release on your generation. Let them see your content, not your container. Let them feel who you are inside, not what you are outside. That is what will change people. Except if the outside has been overwhelmed by the inside. Then both the outside and the inside carry the same power. Am I communicating? presence. Very, very few of all the ones I mentioned. The character one and this presence one is the is the, is this scarce, scarcest. Very scarce. Very scarce. Very, very scarce. And people who can disable tract with bad character can see people who can speak, preach but when you come around then you don't feel nothing about God. Hallelujah. But when you have been with Jesus. People can acknowledge it. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them. That they had been with Jesus. The easiest way to release Jesus and his presence on the, on the world. Is that you have been with him. Somebody say a loud amen. 
Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Rounding off this morning, very, very quickly. What is the objective of all evangelism? Objective. Two things, quickly. Number one, the salvation of souls. Number two, the establishment of the saved. Salvation of souls, saving the souls, establishing the saved. Saving the souls, establishing the saved. That's John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That you should go forth and bear, bear fruit. And that your fruit will remain. So that whatever you ask the father in my name. He will give it to you. Somebody say amen. The salvation of souls. And the establishment. Of the saved. Listen to this as a round off. It is a dangerous thing. To get souls to be saved without making the effort for them to be established. Did you hear what I said? Don't only tell people about Jesus Christ. Tell them until they are saved and assist them to be established. I'll tell you the danger. It's a, a dangerous thing to get souls to be saved without making the effort for them to be established. In, in, in two ways. First, when the devil knows that they are making the decision to follow Jesus and you don't assist them to be stable in that decision, he can cut them off. The, devil, he, the devil's greatest as attempt is to see how many he can send to hell. That's first. Now let me tell you a very terrible danger. When you give people the gospel, and they agree to be saved. And you don't follow them up to root them in. And they return back to the world. What you have done is similar to vaccination. It's like an inoculation against the gospel. You know what happens with a vaccine? like a polio or any other vaccine, you give people sublethal doses at life attenuated viruses or something you give. That is, you are giving, you are, you are injecting them the same polio virus. That's the vaccine that has no capacity to cause disease. Hello? That polio virus is only sufficient to generate antibodies in the body. So you have successfully vaccinated him. Polio, uh, the, 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 not the actual, the, 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 the virus is there, but it can't cause him disease. But it has generated antibody. When the actual polio comes, there is already antibodies generated by the other virus, polio, to fight it off. When you give them substandard doses of the gospel, you have sensitized them to a point where when powerful dose comes, they say, I have heard it before. I have even prayed the sinner's prayer before. If all you want to do is to make me pray the sinner's prayer, I have prayed it before. They have been successfully inoculated vaccinated against the effect of the gospel. That's the danger of it. That's why you see churches populated with people who are not who are not living well and yet they won't answer altar calls. They are inoculated. They have been desensitized. They are, they, they feel they are I, I, I don't need anything. I, I have prayed the sinner's prayer many times. Please get them saved and 
get them established. I prophesy upon the commission dunamis worldwide. A new mantle of soul winning. A new mantle of soul establishment. If God is speaking to you, you will stand up on your feet and shout the loudest amen. Shout amen at the top of your voice. A louder believers, amen. The loud most believers, amen. Lift up your hands, everyone. I want to make an appeal. I do not want anybody to shift within the next 20 minutes. This is just 9 something, 9.56, a little minute, few minutes to 10. And if the service continues till 12, it's not too late, but we are not, we'll soon be, be round enough. So please, let there be no movement. At the goodness gate, the only direction of movement is inside. As I'm speaking, people are still coming for service. But no movement out. I want us to pray brutally for 10 minutes. Set my heart on fire. And make me an instrument in your hands. I want to serve you with all my life and with all my strength. Will you lift up your hands and begin to appreciate God for the word you just heard? That's right. Appreciate God for the word you just heard. Honor him, adore him, worship him. Appreciate him, honor him, adore him, worship him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, precious name. Lift up your hands and say, Father. Father. Say it louder. Say, Father. Father. I thank you. I thank you for your word. For your word to me. To me today. Today. I ask, I ask that you will help me, will help me to, fulfill to fulfill my duty, my duty of soul winning. Of soul winning. I ask, I ask that you help me you help with the wisdom, with the wisdom for, soul for soul winning. I ask, I ask that you help me. You you'll give me the help, me the help and, the and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit for, soul for soul winning. Help me, help me with, the with the boldness to preach the gospel, to, the gospel, to share the testimony. Share the testimony. Help, me help me with the character, with the character that, is that is befitting of the child of God. Of the child of God. Help, me help me to minister to, minister to my generation. Generation, in kindness, in kindness and, love. and love. Help me, Help me with, excellence with excellence to be at the top, at the top of my career, of my, of my, of my assignment. Of my assignment. Help, me, Lord, Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus to, be to be impactful in the print realm. Help me, Lord, Help me, Lord to, be to be relevant in power, in power evangelism. evangelism. Help me, Lord, Help me, Lord to, be to be a carrier of divine presence. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To win, to win souls, souls that will be established. I receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Open your mouth and pray. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. 
I receive the fire. I receive the mantle of evangelism. I receive that grace. Open your mouth and pray. Lebaruna Gagadiga Lagadiga Bagabagadiga Lagadigo, Ragadiga Lagadiga Bagabagadiga Lagadiga 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 In Jesus' precious name. Lift up your hands, everyone. Before we pray the next prayer, everywhere you are this morning, in need of surrender to Jesus, you want your sins forgiven. You want today to mark a new day in your life. Pray this prayer with me and say it loud. Lord Jesus. Say it louder. Lord Jesus. Loudest. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner in need of your help. Louder. I am a sinner in need of your help. Come into my life, Jesus. Make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. From today, forward ever, backward never. I receive the grace to live for you. Help me to live for you. Help me to do your will. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You pray that prayer where you, wherever you are. Lift your hand. Let me see you. Wave your hands. Let me see you. You pray the prayer just now. All right. I see many of our students in the school. The, the chaplain, please, you'll attend to them. The others, I want you to rush forward at the count of 10. Be the first person to reach the front here if you pray that prayer. Quickly, carry your Bibles, carry your bags, everything you came to church with. Quickly, one. Don't be the last to come, be the first. Two. Yes, that's right. Rush, run, run, run. Three. In all locations where we are, run, 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 four, five, six, seven, run, run, run. Start 
start again. One. Keep going, going. Two. Congratulations. Please take your seat, people. If you are here in this service and you need an addiction broken, a negative lifestyle, a life you are not happy with, you are not happy with the way you are living, smoking, drinking, marijuana, prostitutious life, womanizing, any such lifestyle that you know can lead you to hell, disconnect from it right now. As you pick your Bibles and pick your bags and rush to the frontier. I'll give you the count of seven to join us. Or you are rededicating yourself to God. You want to return your life back to Jesus. Quickly. One. Goodbye world. Goodbye, world. Stay no longer with you. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I'm made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I'm made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye, 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 walk, goodbye, walk. Oh Lord, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasure of sin. I stay no longer, stay no longer with you. I'm made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Place your hand on your chest, all of you, and pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, more are coming, rush forward. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of help. Come into my life. Make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. From today, I go forward ever, backward never. The grace and the help to live for you, I receive it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken. I decree the release of help and mercy. And the grace of the Lord be released upon you. I call it done. Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody stretch your two hands in front of you. I would, I would love for these people to be part of the impartation, but I can't see even space on the ground level where they can stand. Here. I prophesy upon your hands.